हेलो टू एवरी वन वेलकम बैक टू यूट्यूब चैनल मैडी कोच फैक्ट्री सो इन द अर्यर सेशन वी हैव डिस्कस द एडिनर्जिक एंटागोनिस्ट द क्लासिफिकेशन एंड द सिलेक्टिव एंड नॉन सिलेक्टिव अल्फा ब्लॉकर्स सो टुडे द अल्फा ब्लॉकर्स विल बी अगेन डिस्कस इन द सेशन द रिमेनिंग पॉर्शन एंड फॉर मोर सच कंटेंट डू सब्सक्राइब द चैनल एज इट इज फ्री ऑफ कॉस्ट काइंडली शेयर विथ योर फ्रेंड्स एंड the content provided in this slides is verified by the top faculty so you can use for your exam purpose as well and in case of doubt please use comment section so let's begin so today we are going to discuss is with prasosin so it is a reversible alpha 1 selective anti Agonist, and it is a prototype drug. A prototype drug means which is having a similar actions to alpha one selective antagonist. Clear? It dilates arterioles, hence decreases the peripheral resistance. That is the resistance created by the blood vessels, and dilates arterioles more than veins, and hence decreases the venous returns to the heart, and overall the result will be decrease in the blood pressure. clear tachycardia is less in the prasosin the reason is there is no alpha to blocking action because it increases the heart rate cardiac output and everything but there is no alpha to block so hence there is decrease in the noradrenaline release from the nerve terminal hence as a result of this you will find that there is a less tachycardia there is decrease in the sympathetic outflow from the cns that is various neurotransmitters and also there is decrease in the cardiac preload so that is a action of prasosin when you administer what you will find next is it inhibits phosphodiesterase enzyme and hence it increases the cmp pathway in the vascular smooth muscles you know na cmp because it uh, it is a done by the relaxation by beta adrenergic agonist it acts cmp acts by the relaxation of beta adrenergic agonist so it increases the relaxation in the vascular smooth muscles and hence it leads to the vasodilation and what are the beneficial effects on the lipids when you administer the prasosin it decreases the low density lipoprotein it increases uh, decreases the tgs that is transglutamine s and it increases the high density lipoprotein and it blocks the alpha 1 a receptors in the bladders and process now we have discussed the alpha and beta receptors and there are two types alpha 1 and alpha 2 clear and beta is divided into three types beta 1 beta 2 and beta 3 now these alpha 1 receptors are further divided into three type sub types alpha 1 a alpha 2 sorry alpha 1 b and alpha 1 d these are the three sub types of these receptors and they help in the neurotransmission these are three sub types this is not that much so it blocks the alpha 1 a receptor so specific these receptors are blocked in the bladder and prostate as these receptors are blocked it decreases the urinary flow rate it decreases the voiding symptoms and therefore it is used in the benign prostatic hyper please you remember this bp h most of these drugs will be used in the bp h clear now what is the pharmacokinetics of process it is well absorbed orally and the peak action is at the 1 to 3 hour and half life is 3 hr it is highly bound to plasma protein known as alpha 1 acid glycoprotein that is 95% ratio is binding to the plasma proteins and it is metabolized in liver most of the drugs are metabolized in liver and excreted by kidney now what are the uses of prasosin first it is used in the condition hypertension it is given orally at a bed time evening and it is used as a second line alternative in the hypertension because first we know that highly clonidine is used in the first line agent but second line agent hypertension is prasosin that is used in the ccf it decreases the preload and afterload and hence it decreases the pulmonary congestion because ccf is associated with the 
pulmonary congestion why because heart is not able to pump the blood effectively into so it is the blood vessels stores the blood which is not again pumped back and therefore the increase in the pressure in the blood vessels and hence the fluid that is remaining in the blood vessels is transferred into the alveoli of the lungs and therefore it leads to the pulmonary edema or pulmonary congestion so ccf linked with the pe as it decreases the preload and afterload hence the pulmonary congestion is decreased so in the ccf patient you can give it also in the benign prostatic hyperplasia you can give it off label is used but now term solution is more preferred we have already seen this in the variant type of angina chest pain it is used because it causes vasodilation but now it is not used as the better drugs are available in the ventricular arrhythmias it is used in the mitral or aortic valve insufficiency you can use this and in the renot this is in the earlier session we discussed no, that half of the body is felt cold and hot and that also you can use it but prasosin reduces digital vasopas vaso spasm so it is used in the renot this is now what are the adverse effects when you administer first is postural hypotension will be found last time we have discussed na no? so dizziness and fainting is is felt at the initial dose and that is known as first dose effect and now postural hypotension is a condition that is a low bp that happens when standing up from sitting or lying down position and you can minimize this by starting with a low dose if you want to decrease the adverse effect first start with a low dose and better taking a drug at a bed time evening time next effect is impotence there is unable to erect inhibition of the ejaculation is another adverse effect and sodium water retention myasis this is nasal stuffiness are less found myasis is the excessive contraction of the pupil of eye clear so these all are the adverse effect now next drug that is discussed in the session is the tamsulosin which we have seen now more preferred so it is a selective alpha 1a antagonist preferably alpha 1a is more preferred it blocks alpha 1a and 1d as it is located in the bladder and neck urethra so no effect on the alpha 1b blood vessels as we have seen na three are there 1b 1a 1b and 1d so specifically on the 1a and 1d effect is there on 1b there is no effect and selective antagonist to 1a so you can say that it is specifically used in the benign prostatic hyperplasia and tamsulosin is a uroselective alpha blocker why uroselective alpha blocker because 1a to 1d receptors aren't found in the other parts of the body there is a specific to 1a 1d alpha 1a 1d are not found in the other parts of the body so drug is more selective to specific receptor and therefore the specific 1a 1d receptor are uroselective drug that is tamsulosin it does not produces it sorry does not reduces blood pressure and therefore does not cause tachycardia and remember that this is not used as a hypertension okay this drug is not used as a hypertension remember in the hurry up don't write that is used now what is the pharmacokinetic given orally half life is 8 hour more than the prasosin modified release capsules need only once daily dosing so when it is formed in the capsule form you can give once day and taken in morning with a food this is a pharmacokinetics now what is the action tamsulosin when it is administered it blocks the alpha 1a receptors in the bladder and prostate because they are uroselective as in so there is a reduction in the tone of smooth muscles as they are blocked so there is a decrease in the voiding difficulty hence there is a increase in the urinary flow rate and decrease in the voiding symptoms and therefore it is used in the vp h because it decreases the size now what are the adverse effect when you administer tamsulosin first is dizziness retrograde ejaculation less risk of hypotension because there is no effect on the blood vessels because it is already 
having no effect on the one way receptors and what is retrograde ejaculation that is occurs when semen enters the bladder instead of emerging through penis during orgasm clear floppy iris syndrome during cataract surgery that is what that is a loss of muscle tone in iris so mitosis is less during the surgery cataract surgery and remember this very well imp finasteride and tamsulosin these are used in the combination form to treat vph that is it is mixed with the tamsulosin and effects are short lasting after few years benefit may be reduced finasteride now what are the uses this is also imp the chart see benign prostatic hyperplasia so tamsulosin is combined with the finasteride to treat the bph now before administering the finasteride that is a 5a reductase inhibitor what will be the actions there was increase in the smooth muscle mass so there was increase in the size of prostate so there was a static component and there was a increase in the smooth muscle tone and voiding difficulty so dynamic so there was two static and dynamic component were found one was increase in the voiding difficulties and one was increase in the size of the muscle tones so when you administer a finasteride you will see that there will be the decrease in the prostate size there will be decrease in the static component there is a regrowth of the prostate after withdrawal so if you stop using this drug there is a there can be the regrowth increase in the size so drug to be continued up to 3 years remember this that when you administer the finasteride it should be continued approx to 3 years and the beneficial effect starts within the 6 month it decreases the circulating testosterone leading to 20% reduction in the prostate side because the testosterone amount is decreased by the finasteride so there will be the 20% reduction in the size so overall these are the beneficial effect when you administer finasteride with the tamsulosin tamsulosin is alpha 1 blocker antagonist so what will be the effect of it it will decrease the tone of prostatic neck muscles it will also decrease the voiding difficulties which were earlier more before giving the drug and it will de- decrease the dynamic obstruction hence it will increase the urinary flow rate it will decrease the voiding substance and resistance narrowing of stream will be decreased and dribbling and residual urine will be decreased so overall you will find that the static and dynamic component which were higher will be decreased on the administration of finasteride and tamsulosin combination because both have their specific effect and dribbling is a overflow in consistency clear and residual urine is a left urine in the bladder which remains filled it decreases also terazosin doxazosin alfuzosin are used in the alternative because these are also the they are classified huh? and they induces the apoptosis apoptosis is a program cell death in the prostate and prostate size and these drugs are given once daily so more used in the tamsulosin clear and our drugs like anticholinergics opioids symphetomimetics next is alfuzosin it is a congener of prazosin so it is having the similar effect it is used only for BPH and it is not approved for the treatment of hypertension. Remember, alfuzosin is not preferred in the hypertension. Metabolism metabolized by CYP3A4 enzyme and is contraindicated in patient with the hepatic dysfunction. So he is having the liver disorders, or in that you should not prefer alfuzosin and the CYP3A4 inhibitors because they are anti-hypertensive. 
एंटी कैंसरस एजेंट सो केटाकोनाजोल केलिथ्रोमाइसिन इट्राकोनाजोल रिटोनाविल इनहिबिट द मेटाबॉलिज्म ऑफ एल्फ्यूएशन सो दे आर कॉन्ट्रा एंटीकेटर एंड एल्फ्यूजेशन इज नॉट यूज इन द पेशेंट फॉर द प्रोलॉन्ग क्यूटी इंटरवल सो इट इज कॉन्ट्रा एंटीकेटेड इन द हेपेटिक डिसफंक्शन एंड इन द प्रोलॉन्ग क्यूटी इंटरवल अनदर अदर अल्फा ब्लॉकर्स आर वॉट सिलोडोसिन which is the analog to tamsulosin and it is selective blocks the alpha 1 and used in the bph but not in the hypertension remember that uripedil it acts on the alpha and beta 1 receptor it is also used in hypertension and bph this is used in both indoramin it is a selective alpha 1 blocker used in the treatment of only bph so not used in the hypertension terazosin it is similar to prazosin has a longer duration action of the 12 hours once daily dose and also it is used in the hypertension and benign prostatic hyperplasia doxazosin it is a congener of prazosin half life is 20 hr has a very long duration of action compared to terazosin and prazosin and it is also used in the hypertension and bph clear so these all are the other alpha blockers now yohimbin it is a selective alpha blocker which alpha 1 blocker that increases the nr release leading to increase in the heart rate and bp in the past it was used in the male sexual dysfunction now it is used as a dietary supplement to improve sexual desires and is also approved in the veterinary medicines to reverse xylin anesthesia clear so this was all about today's session here the alpha blockers antagonist are completed now we will move towards the next that is beta blocker antagonist i hope this session is helpful to you thank you have a nice day